Hello everyone and welcome back to this Grasshopper tutorial. Today we will build our very first attractor definition. Attractors are geometries that act like a kind of virtual magnet. It can influence the parameters of surrounding geometry. Attractors in parametric design can have a variety of applications. They can be used as pattern design or, which is maybe more interesting, in performance design. Could, for example, use it for optimizing a facade to a certain performance towards the sun. We will, however, start by learning how to implement attractor geometries by creating a small parametric city. To start with our small city, we will first define the streets with curves. These curves will also be later our attracting geometry. So we just take a control point curve or a polyline curve and draw a nice street grid. This will be the only geometry we need to draw in Rhino. So now we will open Grasshopper and reference these curves into our definition. Set multiple curves, select all of these, confirm, and we have them right here. With these curves, we can now define the area of our city. We can do this by using the bounding box component, putting in all these planes and use it as a union box. Now the curves fit perfectly in this area. If we want, we can always change them a bit, but it's not really necessary. What we will do next is to define the grid of our city blocks. So obviously, we first need a grid. We will choose a hexagonal grid and place it right here. So we can now define the extent of our grid. Let's say we have 25 times 25 as our grid size. This is of course now very small and doesn't really fit to the plane we defined with our curves. So to fit this grid onto this plane, there's a component called map surface or map to surface. So what this component does, it takes curves and scales or stretches them so that it fits from a source geometry to a target geometry. So our curves, we want to map or fit onto our surface here. Of course, these cells, we want to do it all in one list. So we flatten it here and connect it as our curves to map. What we need now is the source geometry. So this is basically a surface on which our curves are laying and this surface then will be stretched. So we will do the same we did with our curves, the bounding box and use this union box as our source geometry. So it will now take this surface and stretch it or scale it so it will fit this surface and then take the same factor to stretch the curves. We will do it right now and we see our smaller grid here now fits perfectly onto our city area. We can and all of this out and have our block structure. Now we need to somehow connect these curves to our attractor geometry. Right now they are independent from each other. So what we will use is the component full point. And what this does, it basically calculates the closest point to a given geometry or to a variety of geometries. In this case, this will be our curves. And then creates or pulls the point onto this curve. 
at the closest distance. We need, of course, points we can calculate from, and uh, we will use the centroids of each of our city blocks. So we use area, get our center points, and what we can see now is that each of these points has now its marked point on its closest curve, right here. This component does not only give us the closest point on the curve, but it also calculates the distance between the original point in the grid and the new closest point on the curve. And this distance is what we need to define our attractor definition. As we don't want any blocks on our street, we will delete every cell or block which is too close to the street. This means we can take our distance, choose every point that is smaller than a defined distance, and delete it. The first input is, of course, the distance. And the second input is now the threshold value we want to define to know which points we need to delete and which not. So let's just say we can make our streets 25 meters wide. With this, we can now define which points are far enough away to maintain in our city grid and which points are too close, so we will delete them. We will use the component cal pattern. So we can basically take all these curves we have here and we see in this list if they are far enough away or if they are too close. False means too close, true means the distance is larger than 25, so they are okay to maintain in our grid. We will now use this pattern as our culling pattern and of course our block cells as the list we want to call. As a result, we see that only the blocks very far away from our streets are still there. So maybe the number 25 as a defined dif distance from our streets is a bit too large. That's no problem. We can simply scale it down. And all right, this seems like our streets are wide enough. So we will keep this number and carry on with our geometries. First things first, we want to have a clean view of what we are doing and what not. We will blend these out and just work with these geometries. The first thing we want to do with them is to scale them according to their distance to our geometries. So we will use the distance, of course, and scale our blocks according to it. We already see that we have one scaling point around which is all scaled, so that's not what we want. We want to define a center for each point, which is then the centroid of it. But we can't use this centroid list as it still has the points of every city block. So we will just do another pile pattern, but this time with our list of centroids. This seems to fit as the center for each of our geometries. And now we scale them on point. But we scale them all the same. What we will do now is to define an individualized vector of scaling according to the distance from the attractor geometry. So what we will do is we will use the distance of the points themselves as the parameter for the vector of our scaling. We of course need the fitting distance for each of these points, so we will try these two with the same pattern, of course. 
And now we will remap these distance numbers. They are from 7 to 38, but our scale factor has to be from 0 to 1. So we take these points and remap the numbers. Our value, of course, are the distance values. Our source domain, from where to where the numbers are going at the beginning of this remapping, is this domain. And now we can define our target. Right here, it's defined from 0 to 1. This is also the domain we need. So if we now connect our mapped values, a few things happen. First of all, we do get a scale factor which depends on the distance to the attracting geometry. But as well, we are getting an error message here as our lowest distance is now defined as zero and we can't scale with zero. And the third thing, the blocks are larger the farther away they are from the street which is obvious because they have a higher distance and now they are at a higher position at our new range from 0 to 1. So we want the closest buildings to be the largest and we of course don't want an error message in our scaling component. We can do this by using a graph mapper. This graph mapper now basically again remaps these numbers according to graph type we can define here. So if we connect these numbers, they define the value on this axis and get a new value on the y axis. So if we do it linear, it should basically be the same, which is right. But the first thing we can do is we can change our line so it doesn't go through zero so we start a bit above zero this eliminates the error message we are getting and to basically flip the value of the distance so our closest buildings are the largest we can simply change the direction of our graph so now the lowest numbers get the new highest number and the highest numbers, which is the greatest distance, now get the lowest factor for scaling. Another thing we can do now is we can change the graph type we are using. This is linear, which is pretty boring, but if we, for example, choose a Bezier graph, of course we can't go to zero here, we can change the factor of remapping in a pretty interesting way. So I think we'll go with this. Now we want to have a clean. We make the preview off of these. And these are our new city blocks right now. But as you can see, we only have the outer line of our city blocks. We want to change this and extrude our blocks as solid buildings. So we choose extrude and can now take these as a base for our extrusion. But now, if we go to the perspective, all our city blocks, of course, have the same height. And we can change this too. And, uh, you may have guessed it right, we will use, of course, our distance right here. So we already have our numbers mapped from 0 to 1. We can now use these numbers to define the height of our extrusion. We will do this again by remapping the numbers with another graph mapper. So we have our Previously mapped numbers, remember they are from 0 to 1, as the values we want to remap. 
The source domain, as we already remapped them, is from 0 to 1, so this is right. But we of course want to extrude more than just this little bit. So our target domain will be a bit larger. So we construct our domain. And let's say we go from 10 to 60. Let's start, domain end as our target. And we want to define them with a new graph mapper. So we'll simply put this in between our map numbers, basically remap them before mapping them to our new domain. We choose a graph type, then this here. And this now means that our numbers are smaller the lower the distance. This means that the closer the buildings are to the street, the lower they are, which is exactly what we want. We can now use these map numbers as our D factor. And we see we created our city. The numbers may be a bit too much, so we just reduce it here. They are, of course, just the outer surfaces of the blocks. So we cap our holes. And have our buildings. We can also use our distance as a parameter for the coloring of our geometries. The components to use to color our geometries are called the gradient. And we already see that we still need to work with domains to create the lower limit and upper limit of our parameters. So this means at this point is our lower limit, at this point is our upper limit, and all the geometries have a parameter which lies in between, and according to this we get a color at the very point. So we need the bounds or the lower and upper limit of our domain, we can deconstruct our domain to get our starting and end point, and now connect them as our lower and upper limit. We can use, of course, now our B reps as the parameters to this recoloring. Maybe add some more colors which you can always edit by double-clicking on this point here and typing in your color values. And now we can use a custom preview, which lets us see our geometries, which are our b reps in a defined material or color. So we use our gradient, plug it in, and have our colored city grid. In this tutorial, you learned about the basics of attractor definitions in Grasshopper. We saw that we can use them to scale, to extrude, or to color our geometries, but there are, of course, many other ways you can use attractor definitions. We will get to know some of these other possibilities in the process of the course. So, as always, if you are taking the course Computational Design Basics at TU Darmstadt, check on Moodle if you have any new exercises or tasks. And if you're watching us on YouTube, leave a like. We hope you enjoyed and see you next time.